Welcome to Presidential Fight Club, the show that answers the question, if all 44 presidents fought each other one-on-one, who would win? Hosted by two history professors who have too much time on their hands, Scott Rank and James Early. Everyone, welcome to the second fight of the first round of the Midwestern Regional. Coming in to this fight is Harding versus McKinley. James, tell us about your man, Warren G. Harding. Well, Warren G. Harding is goes down in history and has a reputation of one of the most corrupt presidents, or at least having one of the most corrupt presidencies in our nation's history. But of course, we're not really... Uh, talking about his presidency so much today as we are talking about what kind of fighter he would have been as a younger man, say 35-ish or so. Uh, Harding was, uh, he grew up on a farm. He did some farm chores and, and you know, farm work and that kind of thing, which of course like a lot of our presidents have done we, as we've discussed previously. And so he probably was a pretty strong fellow. He also uh, did other jobs to help him get through school and uh, was physical labor from everything I've read. So he would have, he was no stranger to using his arms and legs and he was probably a pretty strong fellow. Uh, he also, he had an, a, a nasty fighting edge to them. He did not participate to my knowledge in a lot of things like wrestling or boxing or he was not in the military ever, but, but he used uh, hook and crook basically to, get a newspaper that he started to put another newspaper out of business. And he was very ruthless, at least politically and, and in a business sense when he wanted to be. So you got to watch out for him. You, he might pull some kind of sneaky trick on you. He's six foot tall, about 175, 180. So average, average weight for his height, uh, a pretty tall guy, especially for that time. So he, he's not a wimp. Okay, his main strength, of course, his main talent was not in the fighting arena, more as in the love arena. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably famous as one of our most, uh, how shall I put this, amorous presidents. Uh, he was uh, very popular with the ladies. We'll leave it at that. Uh, he's going to start a tradition that will be carried on by many other presidents later, especially in the 60s and, <laughs> and the 90s. <laughs> but but he's uh, he so he was more of a ladies man than a big tough fighting kind of guy so that's all I've got on Harding he's he's uh it's I don't know if it's the best case in the world but he's going to try at least if you want to find the most salacious documents from the presidential archives the letters between Harding and his mistress were just released from classified documents so there you go you can dive into oh, all yeah, those oh yeah he had a nickname for a certain body part and it wasn't his arms or legs <laughs> Yeah, so he had a way with words, uh, whether good or bad, he definitely did. So that's Harding. Well, I'm going to come back to Harding because um, even though I'm trying to explain why I think McKinley would win, what McKinley brings to the fight, and I don't think it's very much, is outweighed by everything that Harding does not bring to the fight. But first, my man McKinley. So he is um, 5'7", not very tall, but around 200 pounds during his presidency, which is from 1897 to 1901. Harding did not have military experience. McKinley fought uh, in the American Civil War in the Army in the 23rd Ohio Infantry. He uh, didn't have a very important post. He volunteered when he was 18, and when he entered, he was weak and pale and exited it stronger and more confident. Uh, He worked in the kitchen and ran to the front lines under enemy fire to bring soldiers food and water and eventually reached the rank of major. And his commander was... Future President Rutherford B. Hayes and said he showed unusual and unsurpassed capacity. Other than that, not much of a sportsman, not much of a fighter. President during the Spanish-American War. So that's what he would bring to the fight. Now, again, what I think, whatever he uh, has or doesn't have, when I think of Harding, (laughs) I imagine when Romans would talk about hedonism, that's what I think of Harding, where he's uh, laid out on a recliner in a toga and laurel leaves, and he's being fed grapes by his second favorite concubine, and then calls <laughs> he calls for his man slaves to fetch him his favorite concubine and more spiced wine. And but I mean, Harding was really, really unhealthy. He had diabetes, hypertension, chest pains, and um, I found a. That's book- a good point. I forgot to mention <laughs> right. that. Definitely, yeah, not not the healthiest guy. One good punch or two could really take him out. 
And I don't know if that was in his genetics or his diet, but there was a book I saw called uh, President's Cookbook from 1968 that had a bunch of recipes that presidents liked. There was the Warren, Warren G. Harding breakfast that sounds like it's too bad to put on an IHOP menu, where it includes scrambled eggs and bacon, wheat cakes with maple syrup, corn muffins, toast, and gallons of coffee. So this is a regular Warren G. Harding breakfast. I don't think... After he does a few punches, maybe if you insult his mistress, he might get worked up, but he'll be down for the count pretty soon. I was going to say that meal is what you call a heart attack on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't, I forget how War or Harding died. Did he die of a heart attack? Uh, yes, I believe it was uh, congen- congestive heart failure or <laughs> something like that. I don't know. He just didn't have a heart for it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah. Get him in the chest. <laughs> get him in the chest a few times and he's down. All right. Well, we both uh, don't seem to be on Team Harding, but who won this first round? This one was pretty overwhelming. (laughs) The military man prevails in the end. Uh, You know, uh, McKinley was small, as we mentioned, and when he was 35, he was actually pretty slim. He didn't really, uh, his belly didn't fill out until later, but uh, he was scrappy. You know, he he knew how to fight. He knew, knew how to use his fists, and so he would take down all Warren G., and maybe one round, that's about it. Right. And then uh, to add one more thing to his terrible diet, in that cookbook, it said that White House poker games uh, that Harding would play included the presidential favorite, knockwurst and sauerkraut, and so all the nasty fried German food he was a fan of as well. So, yep, got to have a good diet to win a presidential fight tournament. Definitely. All right, well, that wraps up this fight. And uh, for the next one, the final fight of round one, we're stepping out of the 21st century or the 20th century. Well, half of our contenders are, is going to be Barack Obama versus Taft. Thanks for listening to Presidential Fight Club. If you'd like to download your own printable bracket sheets for each regional tournament so you can guess how the tournament will go, check out presidentialfightclub.com. We'd appreciate it if you could rate and review us on Apple Podcasts as well. Thanks for listening, and may you fight with the stamina of Teddy Roosevelt, the courage of George Washington, and the reach of Abraham Lincoln.